So we're gonna talk about stop the threat immediately. I want you to be immediate, direct, explosive. I want you to close with and destroy. I want you to remove the threat, especially if they have a knife or any other bladed weapon, any kind of weapon. It could be multiple attackers. It could be a bigger, stronger, faster person. I want you to respond as quickly as you can in an immediate fashion, direct fashion, straight in, and then explosive, hitting as hard as you possibly can, trying to knock them out or knock them out of the fight. Don't worry about knocking this out of the hand. You're not going to be focused on this. When you focus on this too much, you get cut, you get stabbed. So the goal is to immediately respond, and I'm gonna show you some basic techniques that I want you to practice. But it's the principle that's gonna keep you safe. The principle of immediate direct explosive, the principle of situational awareness, trying to see it before it comes up and is on top of you, the threat, and then immediately stop the threat. Stop them in their tracks. So what I want you to do is practice the first technique and you can use a striking surface or just practice in the air if you don't have that. The first one is in your hand, like you're walking with it, you're leaning on your walking cane for self-defense. As you're walking down the street, you just snatch it straight up like this, turning the wrist and the hand while you're lifting this elbow accelerates the very end or the tip of your cane, your walking, uh, self-defense walking cane, and you're gonna put it up in between his legs, trying to put him on the ground. So if the threat comes up to you, and again, maybe he's got a knife, maybe it's more than one person, so you have to respond immediately. You cannot hesitate, you're not gonna wait, you're gonna practice it in advance, Pre prepare or panic, prepare or perish. So you're preparing now, you take in your mind, visualize this basic technique, which is just simply lifting the cane up and it can be done with the crook facing behind you in the traditional way or in the tactical cane fighting world and combat cane and cane self-defense, you might have it facing forward. Either way, you're going to immediately respond by snapping this up between the legs. And if you hit the le or miss the legs, you might come up and snap them up under the chin. Maybe they're already reaching for you or slashing, coming forward with a bladed weapon, with a knife like this. This is a trainer, by the way. We've been doing a lot of knife self-defense lately here in the martial arts school in person. There's a, a been, there have been more violent attacks recently, and so I'm getting more requests almost every day. What happens if they have a knife? So if you have your cane, your self-defense walking cane, this is your first motion if it happens right away. Now, if you have a little bit more time to prepare because you're following the basic principles of self-defense, number one being pay attention, see what's happening around you. Number two, get into a better position. Now, as I lifted this up, I let it slide in my hand a little bit. So that now I'm on the shaft here. You can start here and let it slide if you're holding it in this traditional way. Now from this position, I want you to immediately thrust right into his face. If he has this and his intention is to slash or stab or hurt you with it, he's not going to be expecting this coming right into his face. So the likelihood of him grabbing at it and trying to grab it to stop you is very small. And you're gonna respond immediately, directly. That means the shortest distance between those two points the tip of your cane, which is hard piece of oak, or, or um, in this case it's oak, you can get this made in hickory, right into the soft tissue of his face, his nose, his teeth, his throat, his solar plexus, going lower if you have to. But from here, you're in a better position, you're too close, or, and if he pulls out a knife, you don't even have to say anything, except back up, help, yell police, whatever you want to, to alert somebody else, come to your, your help, your attention, but you're just going to immediately thrust, coming straight forward. Now, from here, I want you to put the other hand on it and pull it in and thrust going the other way so that you now have more surface area to use this big one. Now, this is a little bit different technique than I normally show. From here, if it's in your front hand or if it's in your back hand, I often have you put this hand on here and thrust with the tip. But if you had it in your front hand, your right foot's forward, it's in your right hand, and you pick it up and you thrust here, simply bring it back here, and as you go forward, watch what I'm doing here, I'm just sliding through the hand, I want you to practice, almost think of a, like a pull cue, but this is giving you control here, accuracy, you're controlling the direction of your strike or your thrust with your front hand, 
your back hand has a nice firm grip and you're using this big piece of oak or hickory, whatever yours is made out of, to smash into soft tissue again. So from here, you're gonna thrust in here, you're coming into his midsection. Now from here, I want you to pull this hand to your shoulder and chop, just like you're chopping down a tree and bring it through, almost like a firefighter's ax, right through his temple. Again, if you're trying to defend against a knife, somebody who has a knife or maybe a bigger opponent or multiple attackers, you want to stop the threat immediately using your walking cane for self-defense. You're going to thrust, thrust again, and then chop. And as you chop, this comes forward, the weight of this extra material here on the crook, this is like a big hammer, is smashing into, hopefully you're gonna chop down, hit him in the temple, knock him unconscious, or you're gonna rip some skin, some eyes, some nose right off of his face for self-defense. That's just the reality. He's got one of these, he has negative, horrific intention. He's trying to kill you, he's trying to take something from you, your life, your dignity, your health. So if you have to smash him in the face a couple times and you remove a big chunk of his face, comes off for self-defense, I think you're okay. It'll be obvious when the police officers look at the video cameras, because there are cameras everywhere, that he pulled out that knife, you had nothing else to do but defend yourself. So from here, you get in this better position, you're gonna thrust, bring it back, push, coming through here, striking, and then chopping two, three, four, however many times it takes to stop him in his track. Stop the threat immediately using your walking cane for self-defense. So those are the first two techniques. For review, number one, snatch him up between his legs. Number two, in a better position, thrust into eyes, nose, throat. It's a question you ask yourself, what can you remove or destroy for self-defense? His ability to see you, his ability to breathe temporarily or permanently through the throat, his ability to breathe and stand up, his ability to stand up and move, going down here between the belly button and the private parts, there's that thin fascia of muscle that keeps his guts in. You're gonna pierce that, you're gonna rip that open, give him a hernia, stick him on the ground, immediately stop the threat in his tracks using your walking cane for self-defense. So technique one, snatch it up. Technique two, better position, thrust, just turn it. Thrusting here, and whenever you want more power, step in with that front foot. You can see, see if we can get the mirror here. All I'm doing is moving my body. You can even lean in. If you take a step, you'll have more power. Once you've struck here, and again, two or three, four, five times, hit him over and over. The fight's not over until you win and then chopping right here, coming through in this position. Now these are all direct, immediate direct explosive. That's the principle that we're talking about. You need to stop the threat immediately. Walking cane self-defense techniques. If you are in this position and you want to do one of these angular strikes, you can, and they're very effective. What I would like to say, is that if he's coming with this, don't try to deflect the knife or chop the hand. I mean, if, if, it, if it's there, of course you're gonna hit it. And especially if it's coming in, you hit that first. But once you hit that first, come back on the other side. A lot of people often don't talk about this or, or maybe they don't know it, I don't know. But this strike is very hard, right? Coming from this shoulder. Always strike from your shoulder. Never strike from out here. You'll never hit him with it. If you do this, they'll close that gap. He'll stab you 58 times. Your arm is gonna wrap around him. Nothing's gonna happen. Not in your favor anyway. From here, bring it from the face. That way, it doesn't matter how close he is, you're still gonna be able to hit him. If he's too close and you're swinging wrong, it's gonna go like this. If you're coming in and you strike here, and you hit his head, or, that's always best. You knock him out for self-defense. That's what you want, turn off the operating system. You won't have to worry about the knife that he's holding, if, he has, if there are multiple attackers, you can take him out first and then turn and address the next guy. After this first strike, bring it to this shoulder and you're gonna bring it back. And the second strike is more powerful than the first. You're strong here, you're even stronger here when you're pulling. That's just because if you think about it, right? Think about how much strength you have when you do push-ups. You have a lot of strength. But then think about how much strength it takes 
when you do pulling. And a lot of us, when we get older, you, know, you see people struggling, pushing themselves out of chairs. Later, you'll see them pulling themselves because it's easier to pull yourself than it is to push yourself. The pulling muscles, these back muscles on most people, on most of us are bigger. Your back muscles are bigger than your front muscles. Your pulling muscles are stronger than your pushing muscles. So when you get in this position, maybe you did that thrust, you see that knife coming out, you break that arm, and you come back, and it's so going to be so much faster too. Bring it from here, right across the skull, finish them off. So practice again, if you don't have something to hit, don't hit something. Practice in the air, that's going to be just as good if, when, you pair your visualization. Visualization is the key. It's one of the best, most important tools that you have. Slow it all down. It doesn't have to be fast. You're in your position. You're walking down the street. You're using situational awareness. First principle, self-defense. You realize somebody's getting too close. He's got his hands in his pockets. He's fumbling with something. You read the news stories. You heard them. You might be in a part of town where violent threats are more common, violent attacks are more common. These keep coming out. People keep getting blindsided in certain cities, in certain neighborhoods. So you're ready. You see him, he's coming. Before he gets too close, you step into a better position. Second principle, number one, pay attention. Number two, get into a better position. Number three, immediate, direct, explosive. You see that hand come out and this is knife is coming out here. You're gonna stick this right through his face. You're gonna bring it to the shoulder. You're gonna strike the temple. Bring it to the other shoulder, strike the temple. Why do you go straight through the face in the first thrust? That is to stop him in his tracks. You want to stop the threat immediately. Then from here, finish him off for self-defense. But first, going forward, second, third. Now, if you wanted, you could go down and take out his knee. Maybe that, and it's the, the, op, the open, um, Targets, the targets that you're gonna to find to remove or destroy are gonna change depending on what he's doing, right? If he, uh, or where you are, maybe you're sitting in a chair. Maybe you're in a chair uh, permanently or all the time. Maybe you're in a wheelchair, but you carry this for self-defense. Maybe you're on the park bench or you're waiting for the bus. I saw recently a violent attack. A woman was sitting waiting for the subway. The man comes up and because she fought back, because you fought back, you change the outcome of what would have happened. This woman hadn't fought back. She would have been dead today. That would be the headline, the story. The story instead was, woman fights back, man gets knocked to the ground, cops scoop his piece of crap butt up and take him to jail. And thankfully, he was in a city that didn't have one of these liberal DAs who were just putting him back out on the street. The same day, the same hour, right? Same minute. Cop brings him in, books him in certain cities, New York City and San Francisco. And I know I'm not uh, telling you anything new. I know if you've read even a little bit of the news, you know that that's true. And that's a big, you have all of these mentally ill criminals who are hurting lots of innocent people. And that's why you're preparing. You want to prepare so you don't have to panic. You prepare so you don't perish. So for review, whether it's here, the crook is facing back or the crook facing forward, does not matter on this first technique. You're just going to snatch it up between his legs. Second, get in a better position. When you can, you're going to thrust, pull this back into this hand, and see what I did. I pulled my hand back here to get a good grip on the end, and then I'm sliding through the front hand as I thrust that into his face, and then I'm going to chop him down. I want to keep distance between me and the threat, especially if he has a knife. The third one, and I'm not going to wait. This is, a, this is a big departure from what a lot of people will teach, where they're teaching some type of technique where you're, you're creating a cone or a shield, which is fine. I'm not criticizing that. I'm saying that this is different. Not good, not bad, different. Not good, not criticizing it, not saying this is better. It's not good, it's not bad, this is simply different. This is, from my experience, in my education, in my perspective, in my personality, I want to be the first me uh, mover. I want to immediately stop him. I want to stop the threat before he can hurt me using my cane self-defense techniques. So from here, and I want you to, I want you to also to have this as an option. Instead of getting in this position and doing this technique, which is again, not good, not bad, not, 
are simply different. Instead of saying, you don't want to walk through here, I'm going to break one of your bones, which is probably true. Instead, you see that knife come out. There's no longer, there should be no longer any question in your mind what his intention is. Whether he's going to slash you with it or stab you with it or simply use it as a threat to cower you and take away your dignity and your stuff and possibly your life. There's no question what his intention is. When this comes out, there's no more. Do you want to change your mind? <laughs> no, I, it's too late for you. It's a uh, thug, bad guy, piece of crap, scum. It's too great, late. Uh, yeah, Angelo says, for those in a buck, tractor supply has a decent cane for 16 bucks. Only thing I'll say about that is if you get the tractor supply cane or any of those other canes, sand all the finish off because they're brittle and dry so that they don't rot. They're made that way. And then once you sand it off, get some oil on that. If you want a really good self-defense cane, this is $40 or something around that. Often free shipping. It's the first link below. I've broken so many of those tractor supply canes and Amazon canes and uh, CVS, Walgreens canes at $9 to $15 to $20 each that I could have bought five of these. You can buy five of these for all the ones you're going to break in training, and you should always train if you go with a cheaper cane. But look at the link below. You can get the super cheap one. You can spend a little money. Get the fancy one like me that has this teardrop. And what's the purpose of that teardrop? The purpose of this, obviously, is to give you a better grip when you get sweaty. There might be a little bit of blood because it's self-defense. But then that teardrop is designed to break bones, shatter bones, to pierce that skin, to compress the flesh, to shatter that arm, to shatter that hand that's carrying the knife. Coming forward here and then boom, coming the back way. So just a different one. And if you don't have a cane, practice with a stick. It's a great question. Let me grab this stick. Come with me, though. Come with me. Getting a little carried away. Here's an option. This is a 54 inch Joe. Where's the other one? Here we go. This is a walking stick, 36 inches. It's the exact same length as a cane, it just doesn't have the crook. Can you do the same things with a homemade self defense walking stick? You can. Sorry, let me change the angle there. Messed it all up. I need to get a real, real tripod again. I'm playing, playing the cards close to the vest. I'm watching gas prices go through the roof, food prices go through the roof. And if you haven't started to prepare for what's coming next, go to the grocery store when you can, buy a little bit extra of the things that you know you're gonna use, because if you buy it today, the prices are going up. They're going up 20% uh, by the summertime, almost anywhere where you live, 20, 25%. So if you buy them, and that's not just me, that's not just the crazy preppers talking, those are the industry experts in the food industry saying, you better buy some stuff now, because if you do, you'll be buying it at a discount, and then uh, six months from now, you're not gonna be able to buy as much if you're on a um, fixed income, because price is going up, and they're not gonna send you the difference. Anyway, this, less than 10 bucks, this comes from Lowe's, Home Depot, any do-it-yourself store if you're in Europe, you get yourself a nice piece of oak or hickory, even poplar will work, but then you sand it really well, right? You sand it with rough grit, 80 grit, sand it down, and then 120 grit, make it smooth, and then one more time, 30 seconds each. You just, and you, you roll the sandpaper there, and you just turn it the whole time. Looks a little phallic, move past that, and then you go to the next sandpaper, and then the last one is like a 220 grit, really fine, make it really super smooth, and then take some cheesecloth if you're fancy, or take an old rag if you're not like me, and just wipe off all that dust, all that sawdust from your sandpaper, sandpaper dust, and then oil it up really well. Get some oil on there, and now you have the same thing. In your hand, your hand slides down the front. From here, your hand slides down the front. From here, I'm in this better position. From here, I can snatch it up between his legs. I can bring it up next to his head. I can bring it down into the leg. I can bring it down to the other side and bring it sideways. I slide it down to the front, bring it up, thrust into his face. Bring it here, push here, chop two, three times. 
like before, same technique. I have it here, I thrust, chop the hand that has the knife, coming through, coming back that way. Same thing, it just doesn't have this big fist on the end. So if you don't feel like you're comfortable carrying a walking cane, here's the difference though. This you can take anywhere you go because of this, because of the crook. Almost every country, especially in the United States, this is a medical device. Thank you, Studer, for that donation. That's very generous. That helps quite a bit, especially this week. We have um, spring break this week, so it's been really light here. But this here allows you to carry it, and the, in the United States, especially the, the HIPAA law, um, Health Information Privacy Act, I think, says you're not allowed to ask me why I carry that. If you carry this, you can't take this into most uh, public transportation. You can't take it into a bank. You cannot take it onto an airplane. You can this. That's why I find this so powerful, so effective. Because you can have this with you wherever you go. It's called a gray man option. Gray man. The gray man always... Buenos tardes. The, uh, the gray man always... Sorry, you threw me with the Buenos Tardes. You must be talking to someone else, Studer. I was thinking, wait a minute, it's not afternoon. The, uh, I switched over his French. I've been practicing a lot of French because I have a new French student and my good friend at the, uh, the French bakery. I'm putting on some weight too, eating too many delicious uh, French bakery treats. This is a little bit more obvious, right? If you're carrying this, unless it's made like a walking stick, you can have this in the design, let me show you. Oh, it's St. Patrick's Day. What was I even thinking? We, we're gonna have to make another one of these later today and focus on one of my favorite tools for self-defense, Irish, Irish shillelagh. So what if, what if you don't have, what if you don't wanna carry one of those other types of walking sticks, but you fancy the shillelagh? Now the nice, unique feature about this, in addition to being made, that nasty, that's what you get in the corners. I obviously didn't vacuum that one out. This is made out of a wood that's almost unbreakable, right? You're not gonna break that. You can hear, I don't know if I can get it to, there's lead shot. <laughs> I don't know how they get it in there. But these, it takes three years to make one of these. There's lead shot in there and they, they put it back up. And when this hits, that hits extremely hard. Now I was starting to say, I don't know if I finished my thought, but I keep seeing people say this one, this is such a great take. It is. This is such a great strike. But this one, for almost everybody, is so much harder and faster. Now I do remember, I did go into detail. But pulling and smashing with that big knuckle, that big fist, right on the end. So with the Irish shillelagh, it's the same principle as the homemade walking stick. Slide down the front, get in a better position. From here, you can snatch it up between the legs. You can thrust into the face, bring it back. There's that pushing tech. And then chopping from this position, thrust, strike the hand that has the knife, go to the side of the head. The cool thing about the Irish shillelagh, there's some unique Irish fighting techniques. From here, you have it always in front of you. You're always gonna have it either here, or here, or here, right? And you use this, this is to intercept. They're coming down on top of you with a weapon, or with a knife, or a stick. You're fighting from behind your stick. Can you do that with a homemade walking stick? Absolutely, it's the same thing. It's just not as fancy looking. Although, if you're more artistic than I am, you could carve something in there. You could put some deep, dark um, stain on there, make it look really pretty, and it looks like a walking stick. The idea is the gray man having a gray man option. This is the most gray. You can't get any grayer than this. This says you blend in. Gray man just means you blend in, you're not standing out. You're not an obvious target. You don't want people to know what your self-defense options are for, to an extent. It's okay to project confidence and strength, but you don't want to walk around, especially if you carried something like this, you wouldn't want that to be visible. That would have, you should have that concealed. That's the whole purpose of concealed is that you're not threatening anybody. You're also not telling them how you will defend yourself because then they're going to respond to that. They might mitigate that, take that option away from you when you really need it. Same thing with the cane. You might be walking with just a plain stick like this. It looks like you're getting ready to hit somebody or something. That's pretty obvious. 
This, you just look stylish, especially on St. Patrick's Day. Top of the morning to you, you whack him in the face. From here, nice snap. You're gonna snap fast, and you should practice this, right? Snap by twi it, and it's, it's pushing, but also turning. This is a very easy motion on your wrist. Just pushing is not enough. You wanna twist, roll the wrist, roll the wrist. So you're rolling the wrist, roll the wrist, and then roll the wrist. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, this is my front hand. Right foot's forward, your right foot's forward. You're holding your right hand, front hand, front hand. And then when you do the back hand, look how much I'm turning through the shoulders and hips, pushing off the floor on that back leg. Bring maximum power, striking power, stopping power, stop the fight. Immediate direct explosive, close with and destroy violence of action using your Irish shillelagh for St. Patrick's Day or your walking cane or homemade walking stick, which is just a dowel rod with a little bit of sand, a little bit of oil. Can you do all those techniques, the Irish fighting? Yeah, same thing. One, two, three. You're snapping, snapping, boom. Come through, create maximum power using that big knuckle, that big fist to end the fight, to stop them in their tracks. I want you to stop the threat immediately. So for review, number one, snatching up between the legs can be done crook forward, crook backward, either way. Number two, Get into a better position, you're gonna step back, put the cane between you and the threat. Thrust to stop his immediate advance, you wanna stop the threat immediately. Go right for the soft tissue, eyes, nose, face, throat, solar plexus, groin. Stop, and then from here, bring it into the back hand. Simply, there's that turn of the wrist again. And then pushing through, hitting him with the long side, and then chopping down, like you're chopping a tree. And like I said before, this beveled in here, this tooth, might rip a whole bunch of stuff off of his face. Might rip his eyes out. Might rip his nose off. His teeth right out of his mouth. For self-defense. But he pulled out a knife. He's got a knife. His, his goal is intention. Like I said, the whole purpose of this video is to stop the threat immediately and not hesitate, not think, not try to parlay, not try to uh, negotiate, I'm gonna put a bunch of sanctions on you. The whole world is, go is gonna look at you poorly. If you stab me with that knife 48 times, what are the neighbors gonna think? They're not gonna, they're not gonna like you very much. <laughs> That's the stupidity of it, right? You're not gonna do that. Instead, you're gonna say, look, I will defend myself. Don't take another step into my city. I'm gonna stick this through your face. I bring it here, thrust. I'm gonna chop it down a little bit. The third one, get into a better position. Thrust to the face, coming back the other way. And then using the Irish shillelagh for Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day, it's all the same technique. It's all the same technique. Your hand slides down, get in a better position. There's that simple thrust. Or snap it up between the legs or bring it around to the side of the face. Your hand can also slide down the back. If you slide your hand down the front, it's like a sword. Slide it down the back, it's a mallet. Using the mallet, thrust into the face. Pull it here, extend. That same technique, chopping down into his face. Chopping the other side, going to the legs, but immediately address the threat. No more Mr. Nice person. Mr. Nice guy, Miss Nice woman. You're gonna pull it up the same way. This, if you're carrying it crook out, your hand slides down the back just the same way you would a walking stick. And it's the same thing. Immediately punch into his face. Bring the other hand onto this side here so you have more control. You can continue to hit the face. You can start to chop here. Maybe you want to go down and take out his leg. Maybe that's the best option in the moment. Your, your brain will say, go here, go here. Respond this way. Um, target acquisition training, right? That's why I want you to slow it down and visualize. Here comes the attacker. You're paying attention. You're going to get in a better position. You're going to say, stop, back up. You see him pull the knife. You're going to thrust to his face to immediately change his thought, right? We call it a pattern interrupt. He's got this. His pattern is to pull this out and either slash people with it, 
stab people with it, do both, or intimidate and threaten and take away things from people. That's his pattern. Your stick goes right in his face. You just interrupted his pattern. He's not expecting that to happen. He pulls this out and he sees this. He sees fear, he sees cow uh, cowering. He sees what happens in their eyes, like just shock and being frozen. Instead, you switch that, that, that shock, that fear into just a, a decision in your head. You flip a switch. Indignation, how dare you pull a knife on me, punk? And you stick that in his face. And then his hand comes here and you start chopping a little bit. And then you go down to the body or you go into that hand and you rip that thing right out of his hand. And then you stick it back into his throat and finish him. First, maybe he's one of those guys, revolving door, insane criminal. Maybe you just did this whole community a favor. And I'm not advocating that, but I'm saying we gotta start standing up for ourselves and, and be your own first responder. If they're not coming to help you, you're gonna hit here. And even if they do, when are they gonna show up? Three, five, eight minutes later, after this has already done its job, it takes seconds for them to do this. Lacerate everything in there, 120 times stabbed within a minute. And then the cops come, but instead, you're going to respond immediately, use your visualization. You see the threat, there's no more discussion. There's no more, hey, back up, you're too close. It's just right to the face, and then pull that other one in there, chop it a little bit, as hard as you can. Fight's not over till you win. From this position, if uh, visualize, you're walking down the street, you're caught off guard. A lot of these attacks, you don't see them until they happen. So imagine you get hit in the back of the head or you get stabbed from the back. It's already happened. You're going to turn and respond to the threat. When you turn, always get the cane up into the other hand and then immediately thrust. Remember, the thrust is gonna stop their forward motion, but try to visualize what might happen. All you have to do is read some of these horrific reports. You can watch all the videos of the poor woman sitting on the bench and the guy comes up with his own feces and smears it in her face and tries to hurt her. You can watch the one of the woman who fought back and then the cops came and got him and see how she defended herself because she fought and she immediately responded when she had to. She fought for her life and she won. She won her life. He won, and like I said, thankfully it was not a, a liberal city. He's in jail for a long time. But you have to uh, try to visualize that. People ask me all the time, well, what happens if you don't see it? Well, you don't see it, right? <laughs> I can't give you eyes in the back of your head. There's no training for that. I can't give you clairvoyance. There's no training for that. So practice that. What happens if you smack, get smashed in the back of the head and you're stumbled and your vision's blurry? Then you get this in your hand and you hit that big blurry vision. Just go for the middle of it. You know, if it's, it's this wide because you're seeing double, well, hit the one in the middle. Go right for the middle. And if you practice that, that's what will happen. That will be your natural response when the stuff hits the fan and you have to defend yourself. You guys have been awesome. This was how to stop the threat. Stop the threat immediately. I want immediate direct explosive. I want you to train that. Get rid of your hesitation. Train your hesitation out. Get it out. And the only way you can do that is by practicing those principles of self-defense and think situational awareness. Okay, better position, number two respond immediately, number three, and practice the techniques at that point. Practice them over, go back and watch the video again and again. Leave your comments below, what did I miss? What do you wanna see? What else should we be working on when we're talking about practical self-defense? How to stop the threat immediately, how to use or how to train with your self-defense walking stick, or the homemade walking stick. Like I said, it's exact same tool, just doesn't have the crook. And the benefit of having the crook is you can carry it with you, but this does it, less than 10 bucks. And this one I will say, invest your time before you invest your money. Make these, make one yourself, get yourself a nice dial rod, or find an old broom. If you can find one made out of wood, <laughs> maybe if you have an old enough broom, you still have a wooden one. But cut it down, and like I said, if it's got paint on it or it's got some kind of finish, just sand that off and then get the oil back in there. Even if it's an old stick, you can oil it up and bring back some of its flexibility, some of its strength. It's because they dry it that makes it so brittle and they break so easily. Or for St. Patrick's Day, if you're blessed to have 
Um, someone like uh, Doug, Doug sends me these all the time. He sent me a beautiful picture this week. Doug, thank you, I got that. And it had a, a nice uh, fighting knife attached to it. Doug knows my personality. I can't just send him a nice picture, put on the wall. I also gotta stick a sharp knife in there so he can defend himself. But this um, Irish shillelagh, these things are amazing. But again, they don't have the benefit of being the gray man option. This is more gray than just a plain piece of uh, wood because it looks like you're a leprechaun, right? Or you're the mayor of Kilkearney or something like that. You've got your uh, Irish fighting stick. Not everybody knows about the Irish and how they fought, <laughs> bashed each other into oblivion with their sticks. These are some serious, serious tools for self-defense. These are war, this is a, I call it a war hammer. These are all war hammers, but that's a great option if you wanna learn how to defend yourself. Train with a war hammer, train with a, grab yourself a stick first, invest 10 bucks and a whole bunch of time. Get really good at that, move up to an Irish shillelagh. Consider getting one of these for the car, for traveling, for going into areas where you don't feel safe. I carry my fancy one. And again, you can see all in the link below, the first link, you see all the dimensions, what they cost, and they're not, this is expensive. For me, it's not expensive for most people. Uh, <laughs> Just the, it, it wasn't expensive for me like four years ago, but since COVID kind of beat up the business a little bit, um, I, I, and, and I bought this to train with, if I weren't using it as a training tool, I don't know that I would invest. So if you don't, I, I understand that, but I know a lot of you have, and it's a beautiful option. It has a lot of features on it that rip skin off and break bones for self-defense. But you guys have been awesome. Again, Studer, thank you so much for that generous donation. I will see you guys hopefully a little bit later. I do have some time. 